In previous videos, we learned techniques for improving accessibility, and in the last video, we learned how screen readers behave. Now, let's apply that knowledge to a practice project. Good accessibility starts with the design of the user experience. In this video, we're going to create a low fidelity mockup that will help us lay out the major site elements. The site we're going to be creating will be a product landing page for a product called Widget. A new widget has just launched and we've been tasked with creating a page announcing it. This site needs to be as accessible as possible so that everyone is able to purchase them. First, we're going to create a nice large title at the top that tells people what it is they're looking at and why it's worth reading more about. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a title here and I'm going to say widget now better than ever. And I'm going to increase the font size on that and just center it on my page here. Now in the markup we'll be using an H1 on this header because it's the most important thing on the page and we'd like it to be in a nice large font. That way people with mild vision impairments will be able to see what the page is about. To that end we also want to make sure we have a large image of the product on the home page. So let's go ahead and add that in. So I'm just going to drag in an image placeholder here and I'm going to make it nice and large and I'll just put it right there. Now this isn't the only page on this site so we need to add some global navigation just below the header. Remember we want as few choices as possible because not only is it in good taste to remove unnecessary links and pages, it also tends to improve accessibility and usability because it helps people find information faster. So I'm going to go ahead and move down this image a little bit to make room for the global navigation. And I'm just going to drop in a link bar here. That looks fine. And I'm going to increase the font size just a little and center it on the page. Now we have an image of the product and we have our header, but we don't have any information about the product and we don't have a way to purchase. So let's go ahead and add that now. So I'm going to drop in some paragraph text here and I'm just going to copy and paste a paragraph from off screen. Okay, and I'm going to just widen that paragraph a little bit. And I also want to increase the font size. That's a little too much, so I'm going to go back down. That's pretty good. And I'm going to put that right there. And I also want to add a button so that people can purchase widgets. So we'll say buy now. And we want the font size to be pretty large on this button, but we also want this button to be just plain large so that it's easily clickable. So I'll put that right there. That's good. And let's also add some text next to this button. And it will say the new widget, just $10 and we'll put that right there. And this is looking pretty good. There's text-based information for screen readers to pick up on and a nice large buy now button that will be easy to click, which is important for individuals that have difficulty controlling a mouse precisely. However, we want people to be able to compare widgets to other competing products. We know widgets are better than gadgets or gizmos and a table of features would be a great way to show people that. So let's just go ahead and add in a table here and we'll add in our own information. We want to start out with the table header, which will be product, quality, speed, strength, and price. And then we want to compare each one of the products. So we'll start out with widget, which is high quality, it's fast and it's strong and it only costs ten dollars. Then we'll compare that to a gadget which is just good quality. It's slow, it's weak, and it's more expensive. 
And then finally, the worst of all is gizmos, which are the worst quality. They're the slowest, they're the weakest, and they're the most expensive. So I'll just stretch that table out to be the full width of our page. And we're pretty much finished here. One last thing I'd like to point out though is the formatting of this table. We could put the products across the top and these features here down the side and just have some check marks and X's to denote which features belong to which products or in other words, which products are fast, strong, or of high quality. That wouldn't be very easy for screen readers to parse though, because remember, a screen reader will read one row at a time, moving from the top down towards the bottom, and in each row, moving from the left to the right. If this table were the other way around from where it is right now, it could be difficult to remember what was even being compared by the time we get to the bottom. Instead, this table uses text to describe each product one at a time. So for example, the row for widget in this case will read by most screen readers as widget, high quality, fast, strong, and $10. It's always best to try and build in accessibility from the start. In the next video, we'll turn our mock-up into a real web page.